know if it means anything to you guys. Summer loving. Summer loving. I don't know if that rings any bells. But the main point of summer loving is to tune in to the, the love that we have from the Torah. The love that we have from Hashem Yisbarach, our Creator. The love we have right now in our studio in Jerusalem. Thank God that we are here. Bahava with love. It's a very deep, profound love. Tzufa Hava, beautiful song from Yishai Rebo, and there's many other ways of connecting into the Ahava, the love between us, the Loving All People campaign that we're still, thank God, aware of. We have Shalom from Germany, exactly. We've got the love from Germany, we've got love from global Amuna campaigns that's going on, thank God, weekly, and we have a big love as you can see from the cover photo from YouTube, that we had the pleasure of Rudy Rochman in the house. It was amazing class. Activism with truth. That was the focus. And I hope all of you have checked out the class. If you haven't, if you wonderful people haven't watched the class on Sunday, go watch it after this class. I'm not going to be too long, hopefully less than 30 minutes. And the goal of this class is once again, is to strengthen our connection to God, to strengthen our connection to ourself, to have more understanding and love of ourselves because we can't love other people unless we learn to love ourselves and please god this class will be going up on our breslev.com website i was happy to post today the nissen black's awesome visit the week before is already up on our website breslev.com go check it out the nissen black class with myself please god with Dinel god is making a recovery and he'll be back in the studio we hope this sunday we're still yet to confirm the guests or well, the special guest, looking very likely, Nissen Black is working on speaking to Amari Stodmeyer. We hope he'll be able to make it. If he's listening now, we'd love to have you, Amari. Um, if not, we also have another option as well. We're going to reach out, hopefully, to the Chaim OG at some one of these next few weeks, if not this week. And then we have some other wonderful people around who want to join us, and it's just a matter of coordinating Thank God there's so many amazing people. I had a pleasure to speak with a wonderful year yesterday, Moshi Gersht. Going to try be helping him a little bit, get out there a bit more in terms. He's already, thank God, got a good following, but we want to just help with the Unity bookings, make sure that people are getting opportunities to reach communities in person. Obviously, the biggest feeler is, and we're sitting right now in Rav Shalom Arish's wonderful studio, that we want Rav Shalom Arish to have a full Rav Shalom Rav Shalom Ben Yemna. Join us again in our English weekly class. But even more importantly, not only should he have a full refuah and be able to speak with full energy and strength like we all remember a few months before, that he should also be able to go on tour in person so we can connect in person. The hope is well, we're still planning on a tour in November, the end of October, beginning of November, to hit up uh, Monty and Boston, uh, not Boston, in uh, Brooklyn, excuse me. Monty and Brooklyn, just keep it localized so the Rav, uh, even if he has a full recovery, but not to push it, not to travel like we do in the past to many, many locations. And now and then we'll be up to you guys to make the trip to New York if you're not in New York. And uh, that's us being real and going with the flow. So everyone out there who's joining us now, you give us your feedback, make us feel the love, give us the opportunities to feel that we're, thank God, praying for Rav Arish. Let's, let's make it happen. They should have a full recovery because it's all possible. I've seen it happen before with him when he had an issue of his speech. And I already mentioned here that he had a full recovery over Rosh Hashanah and Uman. What's going to be this year? Who knows? We'll put up our hands in the air and we ask. So let's go now into our class. We spoke about last week about the end of days. How are we going to process these end of days yeah I, the youtube was funky last week so Baruch Hashem, everything's the way it should be we even have the website team so with every challenge like last week's challenges and the end of days challenges you can feel sometimes a bit overwhelmed but i was to, very very inspired by rudy rochman's appearance because he's someone who's been in prison for his mission he's someone who's thank god being able to stand up and and discuss in a in a gentleman in a in a very polite proper way to all kinds of people people who even hate the Jewish people like Nazis and Shemam and all kinds of anti-Semites and even people self-hating Jews and uh, and then there's always that you know all these kind of people that Hashem should protect us from so how do we tune into the love energy so as we said already one of the things I felt sitting next to Rudy is one a lot of self-love but in a healthy way because we it's brought down from a Sodic you, you can't really like have a Muna and Hashem unless you have a Muna in yourself you have to believe in yourself and that is something which he was blessed with at a very young age to get a clear picture of what his mission is and develop that and evolve that from a young age. Personally, I felt like I only really woke up 
around 18, 19 to really understand I have more to myself than it. and it's still, you know, a process in works. And thank God, tuning into the United Souls concert the last few years with Amuna tour and Amuna classes that we're doing here with Rav Oresh and being around the Sadiq Rav Oresh and also all my other Rebbeim and all the years of thank God of self-work and having a soulmate like my wife who's thank God always pushing me to grow. We have the opportunity to hopefully come to a level of, of belief in our in our mission and that goes together with loving oneself and then we can really get into the summer loving now the the world tricks us and thinks like the grease movie that i was singing at the beginning summer loving it's about you know how cute the person is or the physical attraction and there's a lot of that focus nowadays in the world and we know without me going into it how much that can unfortunately lead to like a Johnny Depp kind of situation with Amber and need I say more but there's plenty of, of examples and role models in the wrong way I'm not saying that Johnny was wrong but just the overall end of story and people like you and me can work out already with common sense that there's a better path of marriage and relationships that's available especially when you're learning the Torah we're joining each other weekly and touching base with some values and goals in our relationship I have thank God my relationship podcast there's always the links below in the description you can check it out the latest one wasn't that long ago and thank God we discussed some really important things with my wife and myself so you can hear both sides of the story not just my one-sided opinion but hopefully the, the goal is in all relationships to come to that unified approach that's the 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 hope that we have and i just had a meeting here yesterday with some people that ran a podcast who have thank god um open up the doors to have conversation about the garden of sholem and it definitely is agreed the garden of peace that we need to everyone's in agreement including here that we need to revise the book so anyone who has it we hopefully at some point will have a new edition now, i'm not the one who's unfortunately in charge of that otherwise we'll get it done now but um, we're going to have to wait. But everyone can pray. I ask everyone to pray that a new edition of the Garden of Peace should come out, revised um, and clarified, so everyone can get the full benefit. Even though someone like Nissen Black would say that the book's awesome as is, and he's grown so much from it, it's helped his marriage, and there's many other followers of Rav who who hold of the book. But we want this class to be received by a larger sphere of influence than we're doing right now and part of that will be to update the message so that includes some of the books that were written a while back we need to update the way they've been put out there so that it's more universal and more acceptable and that's something i'm going to put some energy into the next few days of pushing with Dine elgrad and the rav and the family orish family to make it happen but once again you guys got to pray you got to want it but put pressure from outside you know you want a new edition of the garden of peace is such an important part of our journey and also we've hopefully been putting out uh, not just a pamphlet of loving everyone but also the concept of it's not enough just to love everyone we've got to get to the next level of putting it into writing and and bringing it into everyone's home this concept through a proper book organize the teachings of Ravosh. so and once again hopefully it'll be done clearly we have to pray the translator gets the concept and everyone out there is listening i don't know facebook just went Whoop! so i don't know if that was my side you guys give feedback hopefully everyone's tuning in the concepts of loving yourself and loving others and having a summer ahead a healthy summer a loving experience. So right now in the Torah, let's let's turn to the Torah. What does it say there? So last week's Pasha for us was Koirach. And for you guys this week in the rest of the world, outside of Eretz Israel, outside of Yushalayim, and outside of the Holy Land is Koirach. You're going to continue this week with Koirach. And hopefully at some point, well, I think we're meeting Matas Masai, which is only a few Pashas away. Um, amazing how time's flying. Also this week, Rosh Chodesh Tamas as well. It's the new month. We're going out of Machana. Yehuda, the camp of Yehuda, we're entering into the camp of Reuven, the Chodesh of Reuven, Reuven is Chodesh Tamas, Reuven, see my son, and it's, that's the concept of Reuven, the idea of being able to work on your, how you view things, your outlook, that's one of the sins of the Miragra, and they didn't view things right, so we've got to fix that, and that was Pasha Shlach Lecha. All these Pashas are connected into the Zman as well, into the time of year. So Koirach, we see that the idea of being behind a Sadiq and getting rid of the Machlokas, that's something like, as I'm saying with the podcast, we're trying to help people get more clarity. We're open to conversation. Anyone out there has issues of anything we're talking about or teaching, please email me or give feedback. We're not trying to, God forbid, hide anything. We're trying to be very transparent and make sure the teachings are clear and relatable and real 
That's why we have such a range of guests, because through all the different kinds of souls that are coming into us, your united souls, that's something well, the personal message that I'm bringing, that we're trying to bring all these special souls to uh, to experience wisdom in a, in a fuller way. And the way it comes out is by us coming together and joining and experiencing that. Okay, Facebook, I'm not seeing enough interaction. Where are you guys? Okay, so let's go. So now we're holding right now, thank God, in Pasha's Chukas for us in the Holy Land. Chukas, we know is, it gives us humility because we realize that the Torah and the wisdom is something which is from Chochmah Elion. It's from a very high place. So we, that humility helps us. I mean, the whole science world and, and business world and everything is now in a state of flux. And honestly, the only answer, in my opinion, is to come to some levels of humility, to realize they don't know everything, mental well-being of the world is in flux you know people are struggling emotionally and there's going to be a, a big need for as i was speaking to one of my friends today health professionals are a massive demand and he's his therapy is packed up and i'm sure many other therapists and interestingly i will be actually speaking to, again to dr epstein tomorrow who who came here as one of our previous classes and having a discussion with him how we can help with that and as I mentioned, Moshe Gersh about bringing spiritual alignment that will help people come to a better state of mind. But this all comes with us realizing, and it's the same with the addiction world, that we need help. And Achnuma, that we we need that extra heavenly help. And Chukas is a concept that purity that comes with the Paraduma. And hopefully, anyone who tunes in for next week as well can come back to this class and get these concepts. But the idea is that you know. The, it's relevant, the Pasha, right now for everybody because the summer months comes. Not only does it come with the ability to have a chofish or a vacation, as they say in the world, or holiday, whichever uh, dialect you use to describe it. But everyone needs a little bit of a break. And that's why in the Shiva world, for example, they have Benazman, the time between this man and between the summer's man and Elo's man. There's this break time. But first, we have to have the three weeks, which we hope this year will be when a hafach will be turned around. That's the concept of Chav Gimel when I was in Amsterdam last week. And once again, thank you for praying because it was an amazing experience. And that's going to be connected to what we're talking about, loving, you know, the whole summer loving. But thank God I was at a wedding. And I saw there the connection between two beautiful souls, one of my best friends and a soul. I'm not going to say their names or any description about them. I want to keep private. But thank God the music that I was able to put up on at Unity Inspires Projects on my Instagram, you get to see their eight and cats forming together with his band, together with Alex Clare, together with the Shira Choir. And it was awesome. And eight and cats also performed with Roy Zakai and Ofer Ronain, two Spanish guitars, guitarists we brought special from Madrid, I believe, and they are Israeli, so they have that Jewish knowledge as well in terms of the music, and it was very, very uplifting, all the music that night, to be able to, to witness this beautiful shul in Amsterdam, Portuguese shul, and also the continuation from the Tish room all the way through the wedding, it was just beyond, and then to be at the actual wedding and see all these bands perform together on one stage, to hear the choir singing, the Hasidic choir, the Shira choir just by themselves is awesome, and then to see it together with such a talented Lishma. We had him here. Aiden Katz, we've had him in the studio, had the blessing to have Aiden Katz when he lived here for a Tukufa for a time period. And it was awesome. And that love you feel at the wedding through the music that is generated and through all the, the, the prayer service, we prayed Min, Khmar, all the different things, the aspects of the meaning the, of the of the wedding, the beautiful moments together, seeing all these friends and family and being able to see these two souls come together in all the different aspects. I was the, the uh, aide, I was the witness. So I got to be with the Hassan Kala all the way till they got to the Chere Yichud, the, the room of unification, let's call it. Chere Yichud sounds better that way. The room of unification where they, these two souls went together. So we, I had to be an aide and witness that they were there uh, all the way from the signing of the Kasuba all the way through through the chuppah with the ring, all the different aspects, all the unifications that take place between a man and woman, this loving experience that, that's available for all human race, the whole world, has an opportunity to find their soulmate, to have true relationships. Once again, it goes together with a value system. It goes together, thank God, there's there's Rabonim, there's people who come to make sure the service is done correctly, and there's the witnesses, and there's the whole experience of family and friends and being able to build a life together with that kind of support network and not to just think like this world is whatever and just you know it's just this animal instinct of of releasing and getting your needs met all that kind of false love that we have to the it's called uh have a solace like this false kind of shaker love that you know 
it, even though if you would understand what it says in the Svarim, the our holy books, Moranayim, these are delicate subjects, but the concept of Ahava, of love, if you trace it into between man and woman and trace it back, it's actually a chesed. It's a chesed who it says by, even if a man was with his sister, still the Torah calls it chesed, even though it's forbidden. But the concept is a, is, it's a kindness, it's a connection, it's, it's knowing someone else in a deep, intimate way. But obviously it has to be done in the right time, right way. And that was the beauty of last week. We see at a wedding, you see the, the Kedushin. That's one of the reasons why it's called Kedushin. And the Suin, it has a holiness and it has a unification. It's an amazing, amazing experience. And all of us have the power to tune in, thank God, in a real way. And it's just up to us to develop the vessel, the the, uh, once again, this is where Chukas comes in, this week's Pasha, to realize that there's wisdom beyond the Torah. Uh, all the mitzvahs of the Torah have a connection to the Chukas, to the uh, Torah, that the idea that, that we have not the full understanding of what a mitzvah is, we're not fully clear of the holiness and the power of a mitzvah and what's the reasoning behind it. Even though we do have reasoning, we do have some sort of clarification of what a mitzvah is, but it's still only ma'ain. It's only a little bit of really the depth. And if, if a mitzvah is eternal, every mitzvah we do is eternal. Every word of Torah we learn is eternal and it's becoming one with the Creator himself. So obviously then it's deeply and infinitely profound. And, that, and the effect and the power and the impact. So since we're not able to see all these spiritual effects that are going on, and we mum in, we believe through experience or knowledge, yeah, and we know in a deep way that this is what's going on when we're doing a mitzvah, but we don't know it fully, but we know it on our, on our soul level, and we understand it through what the Torah does reveal in our generation. And rem remember, when Mashiach comes, the Messiah comes, we talk about last in the end of days. We're very close to that. So there is slowly now a bit more of a revelation of how profound mitzvahs are. Like, people could tell you story after story of how a mitzvah saves someone's life, or a mitzvah awoken a soul. Like, we know Chabad always going around putting tefillin on people. Like, we had Rudy in the studio the other day putting tefillin on himself. The idea, the power of a mitzvah, that's what kept him alive in the prison those three weeks, kept him focused on his mission. One of the, no, it wasn't just an amazing mindset, but he also had a pair of tefillin there that kept binding them to Hashem every day and reminding them what their mission was. And that's the idea, the power of a mitzvah, the power of sitzis, to protect us from sin for those who had shlach l'chala. Not so long ago, we had the Pasha, the power of, to remind ourselves, that you know we're surrounded, all the Dalit confos, the, the four corners of our being and the four corners of the world has sanctity, has a mitzvah, has a purpose. And to realize that, you know, I read a beautiful story from the Chabad Rebbe, and we'll, we'll share it now, that if you go to each sitzit, there's eight strings that come out of the five knots. And the eight strings, if you times them by four, is the numerical value of 32. Eight times four is 32, correct? Yes, anyone out there? Yeah, you can you can comment. It's all right. It's cool. It's very important to get feedback. So if 32 is is the numerical value of lave of heart, you can all give a heart. Yeah, the idea of a heart. So 32 is heart lave. Yeah, lave is the heart is connected to the idea of Nesiva Shalom, of Nesiva Chochma, the 32 levels of wisdom, the knowing heart, the heart level is, is the key to everything. We have to have a healthy heart. And, and Rahman Ali, boy, Hashem himself wants our heart. He wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants to talk to him, he wants to connect with him. This is part of what we're working on together, weekly and growing and learning and steiging and, and developing that heart level. When we're praying to Hashem, doing a spodas, we're cleaning away the heart level. In this week's Pasha, in, in Eretz Yisrael, it hukas they are one of the beautiful concepts is and especially in the Haftorah is Hashem is going to pour upon us my Torah is going to purify our hearts They'll give us a lev chadash a new heart and this heart 32 said the Babacher Rebbe so it comes this year to meet with the Babacher Rebbe and you have to understand there's a whole backstory. we'll just say it very very quickly the Babacher Rebbe is his yacht so it's also next um, I think is it the Shabbos yeah I think it's the Shabbos 120 years He's been alive, or was alive. Yeah, 120 years. Shlita, <laughs> that's all. It depends who you hold like. We hold, the, generally, I mean, we hold that he was passed away. Gimel Town is a very sad day. But at the same time, personally, I've had dreams about him on that night. And uh, he's still affecting us as legacy lives on for his students. So we'll say Zatzal, Zekasal at the His Gimel Town is this Shabbos. So we have in mind Labab Shereba who's in this, this time period, as well as other Siddiquim, like we'll talk about hopefully coming weeks. But the concept of the Lubavitch Rebbe with the Sitzes, so the story goes like this. This is the back story. There was a father who came to 
Eretz as well, um, to meet him with his son, who'd already moved here and was making a, in America, excuse me, he came to America from Eretz as well, who was making a business in America, and he was nothing to do with Chabad, no connection at all, but they had to go down to Houston for an operation. And this father, who come all the way from Israel, obviously was very nervous, you know, he's, he's a firm person, a religious person, and he wanted to keep Kashra and have Yiddishkeit, have a place to pray, and all those good things, and he's coming to Houston, yeah, yeah, Houston, we have landed, yeah, famous thing. So he was in Houston, I've been there with the, with the Rav Baruch Hashem, beautiful place. And at that time, this was in the 60s, the Judaism was a little bit like sparse, but there was Chabad, thank God. They didn't know how amazing Chabad was because they had no connection to Chabad at that time. It wasn't like now, everyone knows who Chabad is. In the 60s still was, you know, a growing phenomenon and still unknown generally. So suddenly comes this father and son. They need the hospitality of Judaism. And there it is, Chabad in it. And not only does he help them with a place to pray, but he helps them food-wise. He makes sure there's kosher food in the hospital. The whole process, he does the whole kadu, And it's amazing impression on these two people, the father and son. Anyway, that's the, I think the son's name was Yaakov. So Yaakov goes back to where he lives in New York, has once again a connection to the Rebbe or Chabad, but his father was very moved and says, I want you to go to the Rebbe and thank him personally for what we experienced in Houston because it was the Rebbe who sent the Shliach, this agent of the Rebbe, to Houston. So there we are. He goes back to New York and forgets about it. He's busy with business. And he tries, suddenly remembers his father-in-law, phones him up, says, you've got to do what I ask. I asked you, and it's really important that we show across the top, and the best way is to go to the Rebbe, so that he knows how amazing his shliach is in Houston, so you got to get an appointment. Anyway, so he phones up the Gabbai's, he goes into 770s, what, how, how, what a to-do it is to get a meeting at that time, even then, and so it means late night meeting a few months later, so he decides, you know what, I'll just write a letter. So he writes a letter to the Rebbe, thanking him for everything they did in Houston, and how impressed they were, and how amazing the shliach, the uh, Chabad uh, agent there was of the Rebbe, so very, that was it. Uh, okay, forgets about it, gets back to business. Anyway, his father phones him up again and said, did you go to the Rebbe? So they, yeah, yeah, I, sort of, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, I sent him a letter, but, you know, no, you have to go see, uh, he, okay, uh, well, you know, and then shortly after his father, and uh, uh, maybe it's his father-in-law, I'm not sure, passes away, and in his savah, he writes after, the, it's actually not a savah, but a letter that he wrote to his father uh, that comes in the post to his son and son-in-law, son, Yaakov. He gets the letter and he opens up the letter. And at the bottom of the letter, he has a PS, the last words he ever wrote or said to his son, as well as one of the last phone calls. It says that, go to the Babacha Rebbe. I don't just want a letter. I need you to go there and thank him personally. Okay, so now this is like as if he's like receiving a message from his father on his deathbed. So he's not going to just ignore it. He goes to the Chabad, one of the Chabad uh, Geboim from the Rebbe at that time in the 60s, and he asks him and says, I want a meeting with the Rebbe. He says, yeah, I remember you came a while back, and I told you how you do it. So he says, well, look, this is a letter, and see what it says. It's the last thing he wrote to me about my, uh, you know, the need to come thank you and have appreciation for you. And this is for my father or father-in-law, I don't remember which one, father on his deathbed, and I need to, you know, live live what he asked me. I can't just ignore it, and I keep forgetting because it's such a to-do, so can you get me in sooner? He says, this week, I better get you in, because the I suppose the Gabbai was impressed by the sincerity of the message from the father, and he was like, all right, let's just get this done. So he gets him appointment, he comes in, this Yaakov to the Rebbe, very impressed with the Rebbe, and he tells him this Torah I told you just before about the eight strings times four, sits is and that adds up to 32 and that is amazing amazing power there of heart of love and the lave and the they have to understand the rebbe when he was speaking to this person yakov he was just telling him you know telling him uh about thanking him for the appreciation and how did he get to the idea of sits is so he just was mentioning because they were talking about how his father was there for health reasons that it, the Rebbe suddenly says it's very important you have a healthy heart. And then he tells him this, this Torah about the sitzes. And then he goes on to talk about some, something else to do with, you know, uh, the family and, and, and how much they appreciate and how he'd already read the letter and he remembered the letter. And, you know, the Rebbe was impressive. He, even though he was getting thousands and thousands of letters, he remembered everything, he remembered everyone who spoke to him. So the Yaakov was very overwhelmed how amazing um, his memory was and how much he took things seriously and and the fact that he said all these profound messages didn't really know exactly what it was all about. Anyway, to cut a long story short, 
Yaakov has a heart attack soon after, and he's in a situation of you know danger health wise, and he asks his wife to get tell the Gabbai that he'd already been in touch with to tell the Rebbe that he needs prayers for his heart. Anyway, a message comes back, where sits it? And he's like, wearing sits No, at night. Wear sits at night when you go to bed. Make sure you have this beggar on the sits when you go to sleep and you won't have any heart issues anymore. Anyway, he decides, his wife starts, you know, saying, why don't you think of what the Rebbe told you then and, you know, think into it a little bit more. But anyway, she made sure he was, you know, she cares about her husband, put on the sits and the 32 and the heart, the lave, everything became good. So no more heart issues. Anyway, there was one point we had a scare. And he realized that night before he forgot to put on the sitsits because there's, you know, sleeping sitsits, forgot to change and just went to bed in pajamas. And then he realized how powerful the words of the rebel was. And he put the sitsits back on uh, every night and he lived a long life without any issues. So we see from this story one, the rebel's foresight. He knew what bigger picture. And that's one of the important things Pasha Karak to realize there's a Sadiq, there's righteous people who lead us and to have respect and covered for those people and to properly, uh, you know, come to them with this humility to learn but there's also the concept that the idea of the power for mitzvah sits this the mitzvah has the power to protect a person once again we don't really understand the full power of a mitzvah that's one of the messages we get from this story the power sits to literally give life if we understand that this world is is a lavush a clothing and the mitzvahs are a, a clothing of a shem as it says in the tanya that the, all the energy and power and full and and health and foresight and wisdom comes through these mitzvahs and the clarity to better know what to do like what Chabad Reb uh, Shliach once told me in London so when you go to go work yeah and every day like uh, Rudy was saying about the tefillin how important tefillin are you put tefillin on you have four lines here for the shin on one side and three on the other and that's Gematria 7 who are those seven shin lines representing four are representing the Imahos and the three are representing the Avos there are holy mothers and fathers that you're having on your head, Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, Sarah Rechel Rochele. So you're connecting into that light of Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, Sarah Rechel Rochele, that are holy forefathers, holy foremothers. And we're connecting that light, and that's bringing us the clarity to go into the world, to go into our life, to bring that energy, the light and the mitzvah, into our every day, and to be able to shine that Ki Hashem, you know, Ekra Alecha, that Hashem's calling His name upon you. Yeah, that also represents Shechina and Shem Shakai. The Hashem's calling His name upon you. The power of mitzvahs, you've been a mezuzah, you've got Shem Shakai on the door. The, the Shin Dalad Yud, this is the shame of the name of, of the Shechina, of Hashem's presence. And wherever you go, the presence of Hashem, this eternal force, just understand, it's eternal. It means it's bigger than all the nuclear missiles in the world, it's bigger than all the money, the billionaires, it's bigger than everything in the world. Just understand the greatness of Hashem and the greatness of Kedush and holiness and the power of mitzvahs and then you have uh, once you think into this this is the the point of the class some are loving then you start to really start to love Hashem because that's why how do you come to the Avas Torah and Avas Hashem how do you come it by learning about it by investigating it by by experiencing the power of Hashem by learning his Torah by learning his because so how do you love Am Yisrael, you have to see the greatness, one, of your own soul, so you don't have all these blocks, all these emotional issues that people have nowadays, and all this narcissist vibe, and all this self-centeredness, you get rid of that, you clean yourself, purify your heart, work on yourself, come to love yourself, come to love your mission, then you can start to really love and see the greatness of another person, with humility you can see how amazing other people are, that's why all this self-work, when you're in Pasha's Hookers, you see the power of purification, yeah, is within our grasp through learning, through growing, yeah? as it says in the Torah. So male, it's you have to you have to kill yourself over the Torah and certain level. You have to kill the ego. Get rid of that ego that's making you divided between people. Look at it online. Imagine if people know these these truths that they don't have to constantly protect their ego online. It's not about you. It's about building a, a bigger mission. That's what we were getting from Rudy. And hopefully this new guest here who's coming in will be a continuation. We're seeing there's a certain theme that the divine uh, providence, the 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 hashgacha pratis, the flow that we're having in these classes is Hashem bringing down a light through the guests and through the through your following and through your sharing. That's bringing us a certain awareness that we can deal with our challenges of our generation. And that the summer months are the time of heat and intense hot our desires and and challenges. And right now financially, and we spoke about it last week, all the challenges are gone. That we have this ability, hopefully, to stand strong, to be chazak, to be 
aware of our greatness, to be aware of our ability to overcome all this, not to be weak, not to be flimsy, not to be uh, have a foundation that, God forbid, is, is not built properly so it falls down, to realize that every falling is just about teaching us how to get up. I was speaking about it with my wife today in our, in our weekly meeting, and it's so important, Shabbat Poi Sadiq would come. The idea that only can be a Sadiq, so important to understand this, you can only become a righteous person, a really together role model person, if you're fallen. You're not going to get there from just growing up that way with the right education and the right background. I myself, you know, I didn't grow up connected to all these concepts. I had to go seek them out and learn them. And here and there, Baruch Hashem, from my own family, friends, there was role models in some things. But I had to go seek further and find the truth. Yeah, strive for truth, as it says, Rev Dessa. Emes. Seek it out. Seek out the truth. Really seek it out. Don't give up until you find it. And there's all these people out there. You know, I heard from the lead singer of Imagine Dragon. He was on uh, Lex Friedman's podcast. Yeah, all these people out there are, are, are looking for truth. Lex is this guy, this singer, I've got his name. Yeah, he's one of the most famous bands in the world right now. He's looking for truth, but who's he coming across? Yeah, the woke religion. I mean, that, they're not going to teach you anything true. Yeah, they're the most confused people there is, except for maybe a little bit in the kudo of compassion that we can all, you know, every human being has a basic, if, if you're normal, has some level of compassion. But there it becomes Akhzaris, becomes cruelty. Their compassion turns into cruelness, yeah, because they're confused. And that's our job to revakish, to seek the truth, and to make sure it's known that the world should have an awareness. That's what these classes, one of the big points of what we're doing here, not just me to sit here and fill up a half an hour space of some content. It's to actually make sure that we're growing and applying. As we said that with Rudy, it has to create activism, it has to affect our life and our sphere of influence and what we're doing. And we have to be able to be strong. We have to be able to say the message proud and know that we have a purpose, know we have a mission, and to not be scared of anything. Loyal of Fakhir Klaus, the Baal Shem Tov said, yeah, to, and that was his saying from his father to him on his father's deathbed, the Baal Shem Tov's Kristallinu, to remind us, and we had this in Chodesh we're finishing off this month, to take the light of Shavuos, take the light David and Melech and Bashem Tov and Rus and all these Sadekas and bring it together. This week we've got Yosef Asadik's campaign. Join together, David and Yosef, Kisei, David Abdecha, join together to reveal Hashem's throne, to reveal Hashem's presence, to reveal Hashem's truth, the wonders, the power of mitzvahs, the power of Torah, to reveal it in the world and to bring that clarity that everyone should know Hashem and we should know themselves, but who they really are who their soul is. Learn the language of the soul. Learn to connect to your soul level. Do meditation, do espodidus, learn, pray, daven, do acts of kindness, be more godly in your ways. Connect into these spiritual energies that exist and are true. And all the confusion out there will start to dissipate. All the lack of clarity will, God forbid, uh, Hashem should protect us from it all, that we'll, we will dissipate and disappear. And we'll be able to come to a place. We'll be proud of our of our land, of Eretz Yisrael, of the base of Migdash, what it brings, the light, the clarity, when it comes, the third one comes back to this Mokram and Migdash in Yushalayim. We'll be proud of it. I well, remind you all, please, to check out all the links in the description. Once again, anyone to check out the beautiful wedding I was at. I put up all the music uh, moments, not the the, the Hassan Khan, they all remain private. I put up all the music moments up online. You can go check it out. You can any of those artists, any of the speakers, anyone I work with, you're always welcome to reach out and book. Baruch Hashem, and most importantly, to connect into munalive.com, partner with us, partner with the campaign, send your names to Avorish so he can pray for you on this special day, Yosef Asadik's, uh, his, his special day, his birthday, and this this uh, Yilel Ravi, which is a Wednesday night, Thursday day, which Chodesh Tamas should be a good Chodesh for everyone, it should be a good Shabbos, Shabbos, Chorach or Shabbos Chukas, depending where you are, should be a, a time of renewal with a new month for the new camp of Reuven. Reuven is a camp of Tshuva, time to, to really get in touch with who you are and the greatness of who you are. And please God, that will bring us all back to return to our true maker and creator and bring the Gula Shlema, the full redemption from Hebrew Menu. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be blessed, everyone.